Welcome back to The Luca Lifestyle, your guide to understanding food, health, and fad diets with an added sprinkling of self-love and body positivity thrown in on top. My name is Madeline Lucas and I'm a dietitian and nutritionist from Australia, but for more information on me, my qualifications, or what this channel is all about, click the link in the top right hand corner or in the description box down below and check out my very first video on this channel titled The Power of Food, because in that video I break down all of the stigma around eating, the negative connotations towards food, and just sort of reiterate why food is so important and essential for health and how these negative attitudes towards food can be very harmful in the long run. However, today's video is going to be all about calories, kilojoules, and energy balance. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to break down what calories are, what kilojoules are, how to convert between the two measures, what happens when you eat too many calories or too few, and the age old question of does it matter where you get your calories from? Okay, so let's begin. Now, as many of you probably already know, the energy found in food is often labeled as calories. Or if you're from Australia like me or another country around the world using the metric system, then you'll probably be familiar with the phrase kilojoules. Essentially, it's used to measure the exact same thing, only kilojoule is the metric system version of a calorie. It can get a little bit confusing because I know growing up in Australia that I heard the word calorie a lot more often than I heard kilojoule, but that's just what you get from most of the mass media coming out of the United States. And in a second, I'm gonna show you how to easily convert between calories and kilojoules and back again. So whichever one of these you are familiar with and whichever one you use and is in your brain, it won't matter. I'll show you how to convert it in a second. So what is a calorie? A calorie is put simply, a unit of measurement to describe the energy in food. But the more complicated technical definition is one calorie is the energy it takes to heat one gram of water by one degrees Celsius. That isn't really essential to know, but just if anyone is curious, that is how they came up with this measuring system way back when they first started using it. However, I will just say that while calorie is the term we use most often, a calorie isn't even really a calorie. Before you get confused, let me explain. What we commonly call calories, or written simply cal, C-A-L, is actually a kilocalorie, which means 1,000 calories. However, at some point in time, we just stopped saying the kilo part and now simply refer to them as calories, even though it's technically a kilocalorie. So the only reason I'm mentioning this is that I know I have personally been online onto Google, onto the calorie conversion websites. And if you didn't know the difference between a calorie and a kilocalorie, sometimes you can get a wildly different um, result in the conversions because it's multiplied by a thousand. But that brings me to my next point, which is how do you convert between calories and kilojoules or kilocalories and kilojoules. So one kilocalorie is equal to 4.18 kilojoules. But if you can't remember the two decimal places and you simply remember that it is one equals four, that is perfectly enough to do simple calculations. Say for example, you know that something has 20 kilocalories. You can then just simply times that by four to get the kilojoules. So that equals 80 kilojoules. Or going back the other way, if you know something in kilojoules, just divide it by four and then you can work it out in calories. If you do have a calculator on hand and you can remember the two decimal places, then of course using 4.18 instead of simply four will give you a more accurate reading but but in this example instead of being 80 kilojoules it works out to be 83.68 kilojoules so those 3.68 kilojoules really aren't going to make too big of a difference and it won't matter if you simply just use four okay so just to summarize to go from calories or kilocalories to kilojoules you want to multiply by four 
and to go from kilojoules to kilocalories, you want to divide by four. Very easy, if you can remember that, then you will easily be able to get between the two whenever you need to. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to try to refer to them as simply energy rather than calories or kilojoules, because I'm hoping that will be less confusing and more beneficial regardless of where you live in the world. So now that we've gone over the basics, how does this actually affect you and your weight? Perhaps the simplest equation in all of nutrition and dietetics is that energy in should equal energy out if your goal is to maintain your current weight. Of course, if you are hoping to lose weight, then instead of having them be equal, you want your energy in to be less than the energy out. And if your goal is to gain weight, then it is the opposite in that your energy in should be greater than the energy out. So what does energy in mean? That is all the energy that you are eating in a day from your food or from beverages. So yes, all of your drinks in a day do count except for plain pure water. Pretty much everything has calories and some beverages will have a lot more than you would think. Now energy out refers to not only the exercise that we are intentionally doing in a day, but also your BMR or basal metabolic rate and another factor called NEAT. Now your BMR is the energy that your body requires just to continue on existing at the same level that it's at right now. So that is all of your breathing, heart rate, keeping your organs running, all of that kind of thing that you don't really think Kilogram. about. Your BMR is essentially the, well, it's very close to the energy your body expends at complete bed rest. So minus all other movements, BMR is the energy that your body needs just to simply continue existing. Now NEAT is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this one is all of the other movements you do in a day other than exercising. So it could be cleaning, fidgeting, all those kinds of things. Even like anxiety type of like sweating, all of that kind of comes into your NEAT energy. It's normally a much smaller value, but it all adds up to your total energy output. So how can you work out your own energy requirements? There are a number of calculators here online that claim to be able to give you your, um, your either your BMR or just your total energy requirements for the day. However, I would be very wary of websites like this, particularly those that come from a weight loss perspective, because a lot of them will give you a very low figure for your daily calories or daily kilojoules that is actually quite dangerous to follow without the aid of a dietitian or a health professional. So I will have in the description box linked one that I actually do like, which is by the Australian government. So if you are looking at using an online calculator, check that one out first because that one is actually scientifically based. But yeah, essentially just be careful of online calculators if you don't know that they're from a trusted source. I decided to just show you the website I was talking about. So this is by Eat for Health and it's just called the Daily Energy Requirements Calculator. So this is by the Australian government, so you know it is by a trusted source. So you're gonna need to just put in all your information. So again, gender, age, whether that is in years or months, weight and physical activity level. I've just made up a person here. So I've done a female aged 29, Again, that is in years, not 29 months, and then put in the weight in kilograms. Now you're also going to need to put in a physical activity level. I was planning in this video to do a whole detailed segment on working out your own energy requirements and how you can do that without using an online calculator. And in that segment, I do describe physical activity levels in a lot more detail, but this video got to be way too long, so I decided to upload that portion just on how to work out your own requirements in a separate video so i'll have that link up in the cards and in the description box down below but if you are looking for an online calculator this is the information that you are going to receive 
So based on the information we put in, the recommended daily intake of kilojoules is 8,023. So that is per day. Of course, you can go and try this yourself if you want to find out your requirements. Now to find out more about how your energy requirements may change for different life stages such as pregnancy or during illness or to learn more about physical activity levels and just how to work out your energy requirements without using an online calculator then go check out part 2 to this video. I explain in detail what Schofield's equation is and how nutritionists or dietitians will use this to work out either their own or a client's requirements. It looks a little bit complicated, but trust me, it's a lot easier than you might think. And again, I step you through it step by step in part two. I also show you an example and work it through with you on the whiteboard and show you a much easier and simpler alternative equation. I will link this video down in the description box and at the very end of the video in the end card. Of course, as I always say, the best method for working this out is going to be to actually go to your local dietitian and asking them because not only will they be able to work this out for you super simply, but they'll also be able to give you a meal plan that fits these requirements that is also tailor made to you, your likes, your dislikes and your lifestyle. To wrap up this video, we have some lovely contributions by a local saxophone player with some jazz music coming from somewhere in my neighborhood that I absolutely cannot block out. So you're welcome. Let's just hope that it is copyright free. But the final point I wanted to cover today is does it matter where you get your energy from? The short answer is yes. However, this ties right on into next week's video where we're going to talk all about macronutrients and how much of each you actually need in a day. So the short answer is yes, it does matter where you get your calories from or kilojoules, but it's both more complicated and less complicated than people think. To put it simply, it would not be healthy to get 100% of your daily requirements from carbohydrates, but it also would not be healthy to get 100% of your daily requirements from protein. I know a lot of people, particularly these days, put protein on a pedestal as being the gold standard for macronutrient intake, but you still need your carbohydrates and fats. They are all equally important and in their own ways for their own reasons. And even if they weren't, would you really want to sit there and just eat protein foods, even if it was the healthiest way? Because I know I would get very sick of that very fast. So similarly, a more recent trend of no carbs or low carbs not only is it very difficult to actually achieve a you know, purely zero carb diet, but it is also unnecessary. There are very, very few clinical situations that actually benefit from a true ketogenic diet and simply wanting to lose a bit of weight does not require you to follow a ketogenic diet. Don't trust the influencers on Instagram or that guy who goes onto the morning show and raves about ketogenic this and ketogenic that. You do not need to be ketogenic in order to lose weight or to be healthy. So again, I'm going to talk more about this next week in my video all about macronutrients. So that is fats, protein, carbohydrates, and even alcohol. Because yes, alcohol counts as a macronutrient because it contains a hell of a lot of energy. So in next week's video, I'm going to break down all four of these macronutrients, what they are, where they come from, why they're needed in the body, and the oxidation hierarchy, which actually explains what order your body uses these macronutrients to metabolize and create energy that your body needs to exercise, wave your arms around, and simply function. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on that video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that you are notified whenever we upload. If you would like to help this channel grow, then please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't. Either way, it helps the channel to grow and helps me to know which videos to make more of and which videos not to make more of. You can also leave a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or if you simply want to just say hi. I always head down and reply to all of the comments and I love to know what videos you want to see next. So leave any suggestions down in the comments section. But for the next few weeks, I am going to be breaking down macronutrients in a lot of detail. So again, turn on post notifications if 
you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of those videos. All social media accounts will be linked in the description box below, including Instagram, TikTok, and my website where you can find meal plans, ebooks, and all of that fun stuff at thelucalifestyle.com. All linked in the description box down below. So goodbye for now. I will see you next Monday. And remember that health is not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Thank you.